All right, I've just put the battery back in again. And apart from a tiny little spark because this computer memory be um, attached, I've got the. I'm about to put the key fob in for the very first time after 12 months. You just hope you've plugged everything in the correct way. I've got the footlight on there, so that's a good sign. All right, here we go. I have no idea. <laughs> I can hear things. Doing things, all right. I'm not gonna. Well, it looks like we've got the wipers on. We do too. <laughs> um, well, that's good. Apart from the chick engine light, but then again. That's probably not surprising considering it's been off for a year. <laughs> I haven't even... Oh, wow. Well, that's good. Nothing blew up. No fuses blew. One change I have made, um, I've got one of these big mega fuses in here. Um, because my remote battery, if anything would happen to this lead that runs from this battery all the way up to the, um, the power control unit under the bonnet, um, then you'd have no fuse protection at all. Even though it's fused from that point on, it's not between the two because the battery is no longer under the bonnet. So it is very important that you fuse that so you have protection with that cable. I've done the same, I haven't even turned this on. This is a battery isolator, so when I've got my solar connected, um, I can turn this off and on to control the solar, and that is a fuse to go from here to the um, Anderson plug at the back where the camper trailer will plug in. Um, because I intend to put the um, remote battery in the camper this time rather than... Um, strapping it down inside which I do with my current Cherokee and set up so anyway that's a good sign um, I'll probably work on maybe starting it soon all right let's see what happens I've got fuel from 12 months ago in the tank and of course this will be the first start I don't know how it's going to start oh straight away well we've got a bit of lifter noise <laughs> probably not surprising a bit of misfire wow straight away no hesitation holy crap down really quickly unlike the first time when I've sat for 10 years <laughs> wow just bang it was wow well I must have plugged everything in put it that way yeah I will sit it down Yeah, real quick last time took a good 20 minutes for the idle cell now. Now it's yeah, getting quieter. Sounds like it's running on all cylinders. Oh, 
Well, so no stuck injectors or anything like that, which is good. Obviously he lost a little bit of tyre pressure. Uh, <laughs> I had them on 1.7 a year ago, so they've, and mind you, it's a lot colder today too. So I'll put some air in it to settle those, but wow. So we've got half a tank of fuel. No check engine light, no nothing. Wow, look at that. That's impressive. Tempcade just starting to just move a fraction. I've actually pulled what was written as a fuel fuel pump and still <laughs> I thought I was going to turn it over for a little while first but it just fired regardless so I don't know there must be a difference between the diesels and the petrols and um, unfortunately it still started <laughs> I wasn't planning that <laughs> well, let's turn it over a bit get some oil pressure up oh well what's done is done fingers crossed and uh, well, I'm happy about that. Awesome. 12 months. You can see I've got the um, next thing. These are the locks I've taken out. So these are a Chinese copy of this American made lock, which is all stamped and everything. Um, even with the windows down, these are still harsh in operation. It's best way to do it. It's not that nice progressive sort of you always had to slam it harder than you um, think you should. <laughs> so some of it was due to air pressure and but putting the window down made it easier but still hard to use. So anyway so this is the American equivalent. Why I didn't start with this is they're non-locking but I've been studying it and the only difference is this little piece welded on here, here's one that's still complete, this is the locking mechanism. So it slides up the back when it's locked and what it does is this, that it stops this from turning to let it, the jaws open. So all I'm going to do is cut that piece off, weld it onto the bottom there so this can then go up and down um, to lock it. So I'm turning the American made version, that this is a copy of, in, into a locking one because you can't buy a locking version of the American one. Um, there are some other differences. This bottom part I had already weld, made and welded this onto this block so that'll be transferred across and the only other difference is this arm. So you can see this arm here I've, I've extended it what they had there originally so I was going to have to modify it anyway. Uh, I've got to make that arm come up this way. All right, I think I can explain what, how I've changed this American lock into um, a <laughs> how do I, American door catch into a locking door catch um, because you can't buy them that way. Um, if you're interested in the brand, it says Trimark, New Hampshire, um, Illinois, I presume IA is. So, how, there's three main pieces in here. So you've, it's locked currently, so normally there'll be a pin where this would wrap around. Um, I mean, I've added these extra levers and down here. That's got nothing to do with the locking. Uh, that's just how it works. I've made it work inside my vehicle. Now, you might be able to just make out down the bottom there, there's an extra... I'll use the, hand, the toothbrush handle to simulate. It uses this pin, uh, one of the securing holes, for its pivot, and it's got the teeth in it that capture the back of this jaw to stop these from opening and closing. So this lever you can just make out here, 
the bottom, no, maybe not, not on the camera. There's a little jaw in here, which this triggers. So when this goes up, bang. So it pulls a, um, across to release these two jaws. So it moves this way. So that lever, when you pull up on here, it pivots and moves to the back of the casing and that allows these to open. Those, those teeth is what engages in that piece that moves. Hard to explain. So anyway, so to stop it from locking, I don't know if I can I have to reset it. Alright. So to stop it to stop it from unlocking, you can see I've put a little bend on it so it captures mainly so in case I push the um, central locking while the door is still open, it doesn't get jammed. It hits the bottom of this piece here. Anyway, um, it doesn't come like this. Something I did and I found because I've got really strong solenoids. If I push this in up there to this stop that I've made. Then you pull up on the release le lever, it won't come undone because this lever here, which holds those jaws in place, can't go backwards to open. So does that make sense? So I can't open this. If I move this down, I haven't got the locating pin in there, I hope that's far enough. Bingo, it opens again. So simple. So you can convert the American one instead of the Chinese ones. So you can see that all I did was open up that little louver. They already come with this notch out. All I did was make it slightly do the same on the bottom half as it was showing on the top here and then I could weld this little step piece in. But um, you could easily make that yourself. I just thought well I've paid for these I might as well I might as well do something with them <laughs> to save me some time and effort. But you just need something that you can put a grub screw in. The hardest part, really, is making that groove. But there's no reason why, if you've got a piece of metal and you drilled right through and opened that up, that then your grub screw could go through this part to stop it. It's to limit its travel and to stop it falling out. That's all it's for. So you can see it in place here on this one. So I'll put grease on it grub screw sits here so it can still go in and out and um, without going too far and I've also put a stop on it because I found it was um, shooting a bit too far so yeah that um, hopefully explains how to convert um, or make a American um, roller latch or bare core latch um, to become locking um, and so, and, they, and these will, will um, meet Australian engineer standards as well, because I know in some states and some engineers will not um, engineer these Chinese made ones. So there's no stamps on those at all. And these meet all the um, department in America uh, standards. So let's hope the, um, there was a noticeable difference. Everyone reports there is. So I'm going to give it a go. Wow, <laughs> yeah, I'm expecting 25 mil on inch of rain tomorrow, so I thought, right, I'm going to start on the doors. I better get everything out today, so I'm not moving them from the shed into the workshop and get them wet. It's got something to say. All this here, look at that, wiring loom, the new door locks, the electric windows, door seals, handles, inner handles, mirrors, the speakers, inner handles, door checks, modules, um, wiper felts, wiper window tracks, all the speakers, window switches, not including the hinges or even the glass itself. Um, <laughs> It's going to fit into two doors. No wonder they end up heavy. For goodness sakes, a modern door has got an awful lot in it. And I'm saying modern door because if anyone tries to tell me, oh, but in 1948 they didn't have that much. No, they didn't have a dash like that either. So, yeah.
so we're we're up to <laughs> remembering how all this sat central door locking and all that um, in two doors so wish me luck <laughs> Get my first look <laughs> without any masking tape, or well, at least one side. Oh, painter's tape, I don't use masking tape on this. Um, with the door on, and just to get a feel of how the green plays, I've got a, um, overhead lights on and overcast outside. But it gives you a bit of an idea. You can see how much the light's playing off. Um, the louvers and the beads so I think introducing like pinstriping that might be overkill but we'll wait and see until it's in the sun and the bed's on then we'll see what it looks like but you can see it's um, yeah I'm really pleased it's it's good I mean you have it in your mind what it, you want it to look like and you just hope that's the way it turns out and it has turned out so finally got the door on. That took a while because I went through three different sets of seals and it takes me three hours to remove them every time by the time you get your, all your, your glue and everything off because I don't want to use any harsh chemicals. Um, just to get the right. The first I had is just with the build-up of the paint. Um, I couldn't even close the door fully. The door would just stop because it would just jam up in here just from that little bit of paint build-up. Um, because you've got it on both sides, so you've got twice layer. You've got your epoxy and your, your high build and um, your three layers of whatever it is of base and another three or so of clear, and it all just adds up. So yeah, it was a bit of a battle, but got there in the end. The new locks I'm very pleased with. So these are the seals I ended up with, the bulb seals. And I've got them right to the outside rather than going around the corner because that way you get less wind noise because otherwise that's an open space here where the air gets pulled in, especially in that front corner. So um, I've just gone for all black grills this time. The other ones were hopeless. They were just the grill, every time you close the door, they would fall out. They were just really El Cheapo quality. Not that I paid that much more for these, but you know, from Ally Express from China. <laughs> Yeah, everything's just all black, a bit muted. I used to have silver around the outside of the speakers, but I think it's just that um, a bit more classy because don't forget we're supposed to make it look modern inside um, and the classy is outside. So this is to tie in with the 2008 rather than the 48 thing. But you can, I finally got to see what it looks like with all the black trims. I've painted the stainless screws. I just turned them in part of the way and then I run around with a black paint pen um, it's enamel um, and then screw them in the rest of the way and that seems to work really well if you paint them beforehand you, uh, you can easily um, unless you wait a while wait for the paint to dry enough but otherwise you're forever touching it up anyway so yeah um, just the black trim around here I went through a lot of decisions originally I thought, oh, do I play the inside of the doors black? But then I think you've got black on black on black. That's a bit much. So the then I, I'd chosen, I had colour charts and I had the exact match of that beige, but because that's textured and this is not, it wouldn't have looked the same anyway. And I could have done beige um, or tan or whatever they call that colour. I can't remember what they're calling their colour, sandstone or something. But in the end, I think the bit of body colour, bringing that in is, I think is just a little bit of that inside matching the outside without being too much in your face. And as you, it's a bit hard to see in this light, but it's around the back window as well, because I thought if I paint that black, then you've got black on black again, or I can match the headliner, which is the, the similar colour sandstone. So uh, everything is, um, yeah, I think it, it works. Um, just leave it as is and I think it's just a bit more classy and you've got the, you know, the, the um, 
original 48 tags that normally sit on a chassis um, built by Willys Overland and then I've got in the middle here which I've touched on before which is an employee badge that was sent to me um, and the grandfather would have been on the line as well as um, her father when the original 48 was built so it's mainly only 48 chassis on this it's a bit of them and then I've got 52 and 58 cab parts um, but we have to date by the years of the chassis in this country so I've got no choice but to call the 48 um, even though the front panels are definitely 52 then uh, anyway yeah I'm pleased it's all coming up one more door to go <laughs> and uh, oh yeah give you a demo of the oh, it's just like a, a safe door it, it, the feel of it it's just classy very little effort and it's just bang oh that thump the test will be once the other doors on and the windows are up um, how well the rear vents work <laughs> that's going to be the test I won't know until I finish assembling the upside and then which will go quicker I don't have to muck around you know, choosing which seal works better wait order them wait for them to come in and all that sort of stuff so um, yeah I'm, I'm really happy uh, with all this turnout just um, something I forgot to mention the gapping I managed to get it to three mil all the way around so what I'd done is I'd set them up at four and by the time you get your um, your epoxy and, and high fill primers your base coat and your uh, clear coats uh, on both edges it brought it down to three mil which is just under one eighth and these I designed the doors and the B pillar to close that up like for instance across the top here there was a eight millimeter or five sixteenth gap from the factory and you couldn't raise the door anymore that that's as high as it would go um, it's and both cabs were the same um, with that huge gap at the top so when I cut the doors down um, because don't forget these are 50 mil or two inches shorter cut through there well, instead of cutting 50 mil out, I, I cut 46 mil out, so I'd end up with a 4 mil gap across the top. So I gained that extra 4 mil of height to close up that top, top gap. I didn't just you know, weld a rod or something along the top. So that's why you see you know, it's quite even there. But yeah, not bad for such an old vehicle to get it to modern gapping standards. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way that all turned out. Um, it'd be uh, one of the few of these <laughs> like that for things like even here I've rebuilt that whole entire panel that's completely been replaced from scratch because they normally I thought there was an accident until I realized both sides were the same both cabs are the same that these this normally sits all the way inwards and doesn't uh, oh here it doesn't it goes in um, so it was tilted inwards like that um, from the factory um, <laughs> there was no way of lining that up uh, unless you pulled the, made the grill wider you couldn't ever line these two edges up flush so I rebuilt that whole panel and inside here is now reinforced with SHS uh, or square hollow section tubing that goes right through underneath there all the way to the front and that is to replace the normal grill bar rods that go from um, from the firewall across to the grill so I've incorporated it inside the guard so it's just little things like that it's just all the little details so the only gap that I'm not happy about is just this slight opening here um, I'm, I think the, I don't know if the bonnet is sitting slightly higher or what's going on because I had it sitting all nice and now it's not <laughs> uh, but it's actually closing up with time as as the rubbers across the top of the grill settle it's coming down and making that all even so um, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased so I've also another thing I've just been working on just now I've had to replace the battery it's only four and a half years old and I looked it up and they say it doesn't matter if you're using the battery or not the life is 
basically from when it's manufactured and they expect three to four years and I used to always get at least eight years it's been on a battery tender and everything and it's still under load it would just um, it just wouldn't hold it and that's two in <laughs> in a week both the the daily driven KK uh, Cherokee also died at also four and a half years of age uh, the batteries are not lasting longer so I've gone to an AGM and I've just made a battery hatch so two screws and that whole hatch you can barely tell us there uh, pops out and I can just drop my battery straight down and it makes it a lot easier rather than having to push it up from underneath and, and try and lift it in and I also had to drop a, a, um, a muffler out, uh, the pair of mufflers out to get to that so I thought might as well make it easier to replace and I've gone AGM which they say two to three times the life and just hope that um, if I've only got to worry about it every eight years or nine years, then that's not too bad at all. These thing, sort of things um, can slow putting things together. When I did the first door, I couldn't get the window to go up and down properly. I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. I had new windows cut um, by a different supply this time because they couldn't get the glass anymore at the other one and it's been tinted and then since nothing to do with that but they didn't round the bottom corners and it would dig into the window tr um, track the, the fuzzies and it's razor sharp uh, and until I discovered that oh, I had the window in and out in and out trying, what, trying to figure out what was going on and that's all it was um, so on the other door, with great trepidation, I literally got the angle grinder to it and rounded that corner off. You've just got to get that point off so it doesn't dig in when it goes up and down the the, um, the window slide guides. And oh, talk about nerve wracking. This is toughened glass, so it can any moment it can just go, and that's it. It's gone. And now I've got to do this one. I'm just as nervous as the first time. <laughs> uh, but you can... The very edge of the glass... I mean, glass will break anyway when you hit it with something like this if you're not careful. Um, but with the toughening, apparently the very edge is not toughened. Um, and so you can grind some of it back. And it worked with the other one, so... Wish me luck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Success. <laughs> I didn't do much. Just enough that that sharp edge just wouldn't catch. So I've even put the bevel back in the side. You know, all I just, I'd go with the angle grind. And roo, 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 roo. About that long. Go to this side. Roo, roo, roo. Back to this side because you don't want to overheat it. Um, so now, <laughs> this is now less left nerve wracking is I've got to hammer the um, the bar that goes along the bottom. <laughs> That's got to be hammered onto the bottom edge. And yeah, that used to worry me. That's nothing now after <laughs> grinding glass. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> there you go. Mm. <laughs> Trials and tribulations. Thought at least I've got Lisa home who can help me put the window in so I won't scratch it. And look at that. <laughs> oh. Damn it. Can you see that? Yeah, look at that. Scratch straight through the tent. But I'd rather scratch the tint than the glass. So, what we think happened... I mean, they're there on the other side too, which I've already done. These nut inserts here. I think this panel is just... Uh, slightly more in because this gets pulled straight when you do up the 
armrests because they um, they sit here and they stiffen the whole door and I've got other stiffeners that go in after everything's in and I th you've got to drop the window in like this put on an angle head down towards that way and um, I've hit them yeah. what do you do I'm going to try maybe trimming it back a little bit and then go from there. There you go. Let's see how much it sticks out. So I'll knock them back a bit because the glass won't fit between it. I'm not sure why it wasn't a problem before, but it's one of those things, isn't it? One of those things. Just trying out the the other doors in. Trying out the doors. Um, I would have to slam it so hard before and now beautiful now I don't know if I can um, See if I can show Now watch these vents hang on my end screen. Oh, here we go See that you can see them burst over and all four of them do it so <laughs> They're working perfectly and no problem closing the door whatsoever. Uh, it's it's firm, but look at that. This is on the opposite side. Beautiful. So worthwhile effort. Oh, I'm so pleased about that. It wasn't fun cutting up big holes in the back of the cavity. Oh, whatever, it's all for nothing. But it works brilliantly. So I'm wrapped. So the cab is complete of you know it's um, all done and just finished it um, and yesterday at the same time we started picking up panels so they were also ready for pick up so onwards you beauty be complete in no time I'll see you later